Hi children, welcome to this week's Sunday Club video. I hope you really enjoy it and learn something new. Have fun! Righteousness, peace, join the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, join the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, join the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be part of the kingdom? Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Righteousness, peace. Join the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace. Join in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be part of the kingdom? Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Come on, everybody. Hello children, welcome to Sunday Club. I hope you're enjoying the story so far and all the adventures Moses has been having. It's been a lifetime. Now, Moses is about 80 years old and he's starting a new adventure. Shows you're never too old to start something new with God. Now, Moses and the Israelites have crossed the Red Sea. They are walking in the wilderness. They've been gone for some weeks now and they're running out of food. They haven't got to the promised land. They are all worried and concerned about where the next supply of food is going to come from. So they moan to Moses and Moses said, okay, don't worry. God will provide. And Moses spoke to God and God said to him, tell the Israelites that tomorrow morning when they wake up, they can go to the fields and they can just gather food. There will be food there waiting for them. True to word, first thing in the morning, they woke up. As they stepped out of their tent, it was like white. All on the floor, everywhere was white. What is this? Moses said, it's bread from heaven. It's food from God, food from heaven. And as they were looking, they looked up, and it was all falling, falling, falling. They were intrigued, and they said, what manner of food is this? So from there on, they started calling the food manna manna from heaven. So they had bread to eat every day. They were full and it was delicious. The most de Because nobody could actually bake anything that looked like that. They enjoyed it. But being human beings, very soon, they were complaining again. Goodness me, all we get to eat is this bread. Bread, bread, and more bread. Goodness me. Just as they were saying this, and they were complaining and shouting at Moses again, Moses said, don't worry, God will provide you with the meat. And he said, meat in the wilderness, in the desert? Where is meat going to come from? Moses said, don't worry, God will provide. Truly, the following morning they woke up, there were quails everywhere. Quail, they looked to the left, to the right. There was quail. And they were gathering it. You know what quails are? Quails are like small chicken. So they gathered all the quail. Everybody had nearly a basket full. Imagine having a basket full of chicken. So they all had quail, manna and quail, every day from heaven. But God did one them and say, only collect what you need for the day, not for that leftover overnight or for the weekend, except on Sabbath day you collect for two days. Otherwise, just enough for the day. And they all agreed. As usual, there'll be some stubborn people who try to collect more than enough to have, to have leftover for the following day so they can have a lie-in. But no, God wasn't having any of that. When they woke up the following morning, the food they stored was rotten and smelly, so they couldn't eat it. They had to go out and get more food. So they continued like that in the wilderness until there was no water to drink. And there was, since there was no water, they complained, okay, God once more miraculously provided them water. He said to Moses, strike the rock and water will gush out. And Moses struck the rock and water gushed out. They had fresh water coming out of the rock. For them to drink they were happy as they were going on and still walking towards the promised land they came across 
a group of people who did not want them to cross their land. Moses asked them if they could cross. They said no. So they decided to attack the Israelites. And Moses said to the people of the Israel, don't worry, God will fight for you. So they went and had a battle with his enemies. As they were fighting, Moses had his hand up. And each time Moses' hand was up, the Israelites were winning. When Moses' hands came down, they were losing. So Aaron and another chief from the tribe of Israel came and held up Moses' hand. So as Moses' hand was up, they continued winning. And if Moses' hand stayed up until Israel had total victory. And they continued like that, continued going in the wilderness, traveling, to having uh, manna and quail for food, lovely food, no complaint, but once again, no water. So God said to Moses, speak to the rock this time. And because Moses was so angry with the people, say, said, look, God has done all these miracles, protecting, providing. Why are you still complaining? But he was so angry with them. Instead of speaking to the rock, he struck the rock and water came out. God was not very happy with Moses because he told him to speak to the rock. Anyway, they continued traveling. Through the wilderness, when they misbehaved, God told them off, punished them, and Moses would beg for them, and God would forgive them. God protected them, provided for them. They had the same shoes on for 40 years, and it did not go, there were no holes in it. Their clothes did not get old for 40 years. They were healthy, and they were well kept. Enough food, enough water, they were going through for 40 years. Now, as they were approaching the promised land, they could actually see Jericho, part of the promised land, from a distance. They knew they were nearly there. But then, God said to Moses, Because you disobeyed me, you did not honor my word, you will not step into the promised land. You will see it, but you will not step in it. As your punishment for not speaking to the rock, when I told you to speak to the rock, and you hit the rock instead. Oh, Moses was sad. And God said to Moses, When you come up to rest with me, I will. I have chosen Joshua to be your successor. Joshua will take over from you. That's the end of Moses' story. Next week, we will bring in another character. Can you guess who it is? I bet you know already. It starts with J. See you next week. Bye. Hello again. Last week you heard how Auntie Bossa told you the story of Moses and his Ten Commandments that God gave him. We're going to make an iPhone reminder of the Ten Commandments so you can remember what God gave Moses from last week. The first thing we need is to print out the two pieces of paper we have that are on the bottom of this uh, video. This is the iPhone start, the face, and the Ten Commandments that go in there. Now the other things that you'll need are a rule, a cutting knife. Now if you haven't got one, I'll show you how to do it just with scissors. Uh, and make sure you have an adult either cutting or supervising your cutting. Don't do it on your own. A pair of scissors, some colouring sticks and some glue. So the first thing we're going to do is cut out the Ten Commandments. You only need one of them, so let's cut it out. Next thing we have to do is to take this page and fold it over. You can see there's a crease line there and also you might want to fill in these edges which I've done with just a pencil. Line it up with the top in half along the dotted line then smooth it down and that will give you the face of your iPhone. Now the best thing to do is colour these in now while, before they're glued or anything else. So I'm going to lightly colour over the Ten Commandments Leaving this line, because you're going to glue that, so I'm going to do it very quickly and colour your iPhone. Now you can do that how you like. I'm actually not going to colour this one. I will colour a later one. So then we'll show you what to do then. The next thing you have to do is place the Ten Commandments inside the iPhone like a book and then you can glue it in. Now the next thing you have to do is cut out the numbers, which you do with it open like that. 
Now I'm just going to mark with red where you have to cut. So you need to cut along here, just to that line. Then you have to cut down this black line. Avoid that little dotted line. So along there, down this black line. Avoid that bit and along there and down this black line and then along here to there along here to that bit and along there so I hope you can see that so what you have is two lots of lines there that won't be cut now I'm going to cut them with a craft knife but as I said I'll show you how to do it with a pair of scissors later If you do need to use a knife, make sure you use either a cutting mat or a large amount of newspaper so that you don't cut your best table. So now you should have a piece of paper like that. So that these open, these should open, and so should these. What we need to do now is glue this together. Glue around the iPhone, and very carefully glue these little lines there. Try not to get any glue onto the Ten Commandments, and then try and line up. Is where it gets quite difficult. You need to line up the dotted lines with those bits in the middle. We've got the numbers. We have Ten Commandments on the back. So what we need to do now is to snip through these lines to make the numbers move individually. It's best to let the glue dry, then you can put these down and you've got your Ten Commandments. All you have to do now is just tidy up the iPhone and there you have your iPhone Ten Commandments. Hello Sunday Club. Hi children. Uh, today I think we looked at uh, disobedience and consequences. What you do to people or the, some of the time the decisions you make or if you do someone wrong there are consequences meaning that there, are, there is a price to pay and it's never normally a good one. It may affect you or the person you did wrong or persons connected to that person. So you must be careful about the things you say and the decisions you make because it can have an adverse effect on the people around you and also the people around the person to whom you did wrong. Spray. Father, we thank you for the lesson today. Father, we ask that you will help us to take from that the fact that there are consequences for our actions. Help us, Lord, to be obedient. and to look to you to help us along the way, to look to you for guidance. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, that's it for this week, children. I hope you had fun, you learned something new, and you can take it forward this week. Have a God-blessed week. Bye.